Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Chris. It's your boy, Chris. It's another amazing episode of Finance Patient. This channel is all about making money. It's all about saving money. It's all about building generational wealth. And it's all about financially emancipating yourself from generational poverty. As a certified personal trainer and entrepreneur, everybody, I talk a lot about uh, physical fitness and about physical strength. But I also wanted to make a video talking about mental fortitude and most importantly, mental strength and things that uh, essentially mentally strong people do not do. Because it's very hard to be financially literate and build generational uh, wealth, uh, if you're a mentally weak person, you have to have mental fortitude and mental strength to make it in this uh, game called life, and especially in this game called entrepreneurship and in corporate America. So for this particular video, guys, we're gonna talk about things that mentally strong people don't do. First thing, mentally strong people do not waste time feeling sorry for themselves. Guys, I'm gonna be completely honest, this may trigger a few of you, but I'm gonna be completely real, I'm gonna keep it a book. Life, it happens to all of us. So guess what? I hope that you fail at a lot of things. I hope your girlfriend dumps you. I hope your boyfriend leaves you. I hope you get beat up in a fight. I hope you talk junk to the wrong guy and he basically sp splits your lip. I hope you get fired. <gasps> I hope you start a business and it fails. <gasps> Mommy. There's this large, scary black man. Maybe he's a thug. He's on YouTube telling me he hopes that I fail. <laughs> Guys, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, okay? In life, bad things are gonna happen to you. But guess what? It happens to everybody. You have to figure out that no one cares. You gotta figure out no one cares that uh, your girlfriend left you. No one cares that your boyfriend left you. No one cares you got fired. No one cares that you started a business and it failed. No one cares. Work harder. And the faster you realize that no one cares, and I'm being serious about this. And the faster you realize basically that no one is coming to save you and that you have to save yourself, the better off you're gonna be. Mentally strong people, they cry, they mourn, but they don't stay there. They pick themselves up and they keep moving forward. The most successful people that I've ever met in my life, they had very horrible things happen to them, but you know what? They got over it. They learned from it and they kept moving on going on in their lives. Next. Mentally strong people, they don't feel that the world owes them anything and they're not entitled. Guys, I'm just gonna keep this one completely real. The world does not owe you anything. No one is coming to save you. And the faster you realize that no one is coming to save you, the better off you are going to be. Entitled people who don't wanna work hard and basically uh, wanna make excuses, they are constantly doomed to fail. They're constantly doomed to fail in their relationships. They're constantly doomed to fail with their kids. They're constantly doomed to fail in any business venture at their start. They're constantly boom, uh, doomed to fail basically in corporate America. So successful successful people, they don't make excuses, people. Successful people, they don't, they understand that um, they're not entitled and that the world doesn't owe them anything. Success people, it never comes before hard work. And entitled, pe and entitled people are almost always universally lazy and they don't make it anywhere. Next. Mentally strong people, they don't worry about trying to make everyone happy. And this is one of those things that uh, I like to bring up because uh, I've had a lot of people um, basically come at me and also just different things in life in regards to some of the things that um, I've said or whatever. And I'll be honest with you, um, I've had people say they do not like some of the things that I say on this YouTube channel. And I've had people say that they like some of the things that I say on this YouTube channel. Um, basically people, I'm not saying that you need to be a rude or uh, um, unlikable uh, douchey person, but what I am saying is this, the fastest way to come across as inauthentic, the fastest way to come across as cheesy, the fastest way to come across basically as a people pleasing um, loser who no one wants to be around is to try to please everybody all the time and to try to be everything to everyone all the time. And life people, you are literally never going to please everyone, so don't try. Instead, focus on pleasing the individuals who love you, focus on pleasing the individuals, most importantly, who give you the type of advice you need to hear and focus on pleasing the individual people who are pushing you to become a better man or a better woman financially, professionally, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, entrepreneurially, and push and uh, basically focus on pleasing the people who give you the type of advice that are gonna basically set your generations up, to become more successful than you are. Next, mentally strong people, they do not focus on things that they can't control. Guys, life is hard. I mean, let's keep it honest. It's even harder, however, if you waste your time focusing on things that you don't control and that you can't control. My advice is simple. You should care about things that basically bother you, but keep in mind what you can change and what you can't change. 
you can change essentially how obese you are. You can go to the gym. You can say you can change essentially how unhealthy you are. You can eat healthier. You can drink more water. You can change basically how broke you are. You can start a business. You can do something you're passionate about. You can create that LLC. Um, you can change basically uh, how poor you are. You can you can max out your four hundred one k. You can max out your Roth IRA. You can max out your HSA. Your HSA. You can start investing um tens of thousands of dollars every year into an index fund. Uh, basically, people, you can um you can you can change these things. You can watch videos like mine so that you can learn how to build generational wealth. So my advice is simple, people. Be very careful about what you ingest large amounts of. If you're constantly investing, ingesting and in, um, large amounts of toxic social media, large amounts of toxic cable news ne um, networks or whatever, they just, that just sell you fear, it is going to negatively affect your bottom line. It's going to negatively affect your psyche and it's going to neg negatively affect your emotions and your, your relationships. So my advice is simple, people. Uh, focus on what you can control, not what you can't control. And mentally strong people, they do not focus on things that they cannot control. Next, mentally strong people, they don't fear taking calculated risks. Mentally strong people, guys, they don't always play it safe. And they, and they ultimately put themselves in extremely uncomfortable positions sometimes uh, so that they can chase their craziest and their wildest dreams. If your dreams don't scare you, people, they're too small. Mentally strong people are willing to walk away from that job where the boss cusses them out and demeans them and emasculates them every day because that boss feels that they can do that because they pay them a type of salary well into the six figures. Mentally strong people are like, bump that. I'm not going to tolerate this. I don't care what, I don't care if I don't have anything lined up for it. I will not let you talk to me like that. And they leave and they go start their business. Mentally strong people, everyone, they are willing to walk away from a verbally abusive or emotionally abusive partner because she abuses them every chance that she gets or she emasculates them. Even if this guy knows that he doesn't have anyone else basically to go to yet, he realizes, okay, my my life matters, my value matters, and I will not let a person talk to me like this, and they get up and leave. Mentally strong women are willing to leave that physically abusive uh, spouse or physically abusive boyfriend, a physically abusive relationship that they're in um, or whatever, because they realize, okay, I will not let a person treat me like this, and I know somebody better has to be out there. Mentally strong people, basically, they are willing to leave the small city, the fall, small town, the small country, they grew, the small place they grew up in for a better lifestyle and a better job 2,000 miles away or whatever when their entire family is telling them, you need to stay here with us. Why are you leaving? A mentally strong person, a mentally strong immigrant is willing to get up and leave the only country that they've ever known pretty much so they can come to the United States or come to, any, or come to a country where their kids have opportunities, better opportunities for better schools and the opportunity to start a business because they know that, okay, if I leave my parent country and come to this other country, there's a very good possibility that my kids and my grandkids kids will have a better lifestyle than I had, even if I don't speak the language. Mentally strong people, once again, people, they're able to walk away from the things that give them comfort for the idea and the dream to be slightly uncomfortable for a couple of years so that ultimately their kids and themselves can have a much more comfortable and a much better lifestyle down the road. But as I said earlier, everybody, mentally strong people, they do not fear taking calculated risks. Next. Mentally strong people don't keep making the same mistakes over and over again. This is one of the saddest things that I notice or whatever. When I see a person that constantly makes the same mistakes um, and constantly does the same thing and they expect different results. The definition of insanity, people, is to do the same thing and to expect different results. And nothing is sadder than seeing a family member or a close friend or whoever keep making the exact same mistakes, keep ending up in the exact same situations, then keep asking them to bail you out of the exact same drama year in and year out. It's very sad. Smart people, they learn from their mistakes, but wise people learn from the mistakes of others. And mentally strong people, they don't keep making the same mistake over and over again. Next, mentally strong people, I'll, be, I'll keep it completely honest, they're not haters. They don't resent other people's success. It, more, more or less, highly successful people are typically rarely haters. Mentally strong people, they don't resent other people's success. In fact, if you keep it honestly a buck, they actually watch um, what successful people do from a mile away and they emulate it. Um, I'm a, I, I like watching uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. I like following the Grant Cardone. I love watching the podcasts and the um, YouTube channels of uh, men like Tony Robbins and the interviews of men of that nature. I love sitting back and learning from these individuals. I love watching basically the work ethic, God rest his soul, the late great Kobe Bryant, a man that literally would be in the gym for 24 hours straight or whatever, working on playing basketball and working on his craft. I love seeing stories like Steph Curry or Russell Wilson. These are these are both undersized men in their positions, one in the NFL, one in the NBA, both undersized men in their positions, basically, who dominate uh, professional athletes in sports that basically typically dictate to how large you are and makes you a better person. Russell Wilson, uh, Super Bowl winner, um, Steph Curry, he's won four NBA championships. So, and these men basically, they got drafted very low, but they basically defied all the odds. I love seeing guys like LeBron James. This man grew up uh, 
never met his biological father. His mother had him at 16 or whatever. He lived in multiple housing projects. The craziest thing about it is LeBron James has basically made over uh, $300 million playing basketball. The thing is also better about it is that he's made over $700 million as an entrepreneur. So think about that for a minute. I love watching men from a distance like Mark Ullert, uh, like Mark, like Mark Washington or Ulrich Joseph, men that started their own business and started their own firms. These are the kind of things that people I like to I like to sit back and observe. And mentally strong people, there are a lot of things, but they don't resent other people's success. They emulate it. They're not haters. Keep it moving. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, please like, please comment, please subscribe. It helps the algorithm. And on top of that, it helps me get, it helps me give all you guys a lot more free content. Next, mentally strong people, they do not dwell on the past. I've said it multiple times already in this video, people. I hope that you fail because uh, when you fail, you learn a lot more from your failures than from your successes. And I've never met an extremely successful person who didn't go through a lot of BS in their life. Life happens to all of us, everyone, but no one cares about how bad your past was. No one cares once again, your girlfriend dumped you. No one cares your boyfriend dumped you. No one cares that your baby mama took all your money. No one cares that your ex-wife possibly took all your money. No one cares that you got cut from your JV basketball team. No one cares that you got cut from the, I don't know, the chess team. No one cares that you got fired no one cares but you know what mentally strong people they realize that and they basically learn from their past they move on and they focus on their future next mentally strong people are very comfortable being alone for a season there are different seasons in life people um there's a time to plant there's a time to build there's a time to cry there's a time to laugh there's a time to be in a relationship and there's time to be alone if you grew up surrounded by losers and excuse makers, you most likely will be a mentally weak loser and also an excuse maker. It's sadder, however, even when these, and it's even sadder when these people are your own family members. The fastest way to, to not be a loser, however, is to stop hanging out with essential losers. And the fastest way, I'll give you, a, I'll give you a secret as well. The fastest way you can find if a part, if you are surrounded by losers is if you are constantly surrounded by people who keep tearing you down whenever you want to do better. Why are you reading that book? Our people don't read. Why are you trying to go to the gym? Our people are always obese. Why do you want to, uh, be, why are you reading those books? Why are you studying so hard? Why do you basically want to get up and do better for your life? Why do you want to get off of welfare? Why do you want to leave the farm? Why do you want to leave the trailer parks? Why do you want to leave this small city? Why are you always trying to do better? Do you think you're better than us? When you really get on your purpose, people, you might be alone for a while because you may have grown up with people who are literally holding you back and they don't want you to do better because if you do better, you're going to leave them behind and they know that. Or you're going to make them feel bad because they're not working as hard as you are. And you're gonna have to be alone for a while. And you probably eventually are going to de definitely have to make some new friends. But therein lies the beauty. Because if you make new friends and you start creating new relationships and new family members or whatever, you start to date new people, you're gonna start to realize that I love those individuals in the past, but in order for me to go to the next level, I had to basically, unfortunately, edit that relationship. So when you start reading these books, when you start investing your money, when you start stacking your generational paper, when you start seeing your um your portfolio go up, when you start getting better job offers, when you dump that toxic man or that toxic woman that basically is uh, destroying you and emasculating every chance that she gets, you will be alone for a little bit. But if you're serious about your grind and you're serious basically about stacking your paper and you're serious more or less about becoming a better person, it's all going to be worth it because you're going to meet better individuals and higher caliber human beings along the way. Next, mentally strong people, they do not expect immediate gratification. So I've been running this YouTube channel. I've been doing financial um, and I've been helping people with their finances for years. And I can almost immediately tell whether or not a person is going to be receptive and um, basically stack the generational wealth within two to five seconds of me talking to them. Why? One of the first things that I've done that I've noticed pretty much is that mentally strong people, they understand the importance of being patient and, and waiting for things to mature. Slow and steady wins the race, people. I don't care whether it's in your dating life, whether it's in your professional life, uh, whether it's in your uh, physical life or whatever, slow and steady wins the race. They've done studies and the most successful people aren't the smartest and they're not the prettiest or the most attractive. It's the people who are patient and who delay their gratification for the things they wanna work hard for. Mentally weak, unsuccessful people can never wait for anything. And that's why they basically stay in the rut in life that they're in. That's also why they don't build generational wealth. A patient, per a patient person is perfectly okay investing $6,000 a year into that Roth IRA at 18 years old because they know they'll be a millionaire by the time they're 45. Mentally strong people realize that life's a marathon, people. It is not a sprint. And they focus on the long term. They don't focus on the short term. Next, mentally strong people do not quit after the first failure. In general, I find mentally strong people don't quit at any, they don't quit at all. Um, I'll give you an example. 
So this is a book called Can't Hurt Me by this gentleman named David Goggins. He's a U.S. Navy SEAL, and he was a U.S. Navy SEAL, active duty. And this man's life was beyond, um, I mean, it's beyond admirable. It, it's, it's insane generally what this guy has gone through to get to where he's at in life. So David Goggins was nearly 400 pounds. He said, you know what, I wanna be a SEAL or whatever. Uh, to give you a little background about this guy, um, he basically grew up as a child, he watched his father nearly beat his mother to death on multiple occasions. He was diagnosed with dyslexia. He saw a classmate get run over by a bus when he was six or seven years old. He got called the N-word multiple times by his classmates or whatever because he was the only black kid in rural Indiana. By the time David Goggins was 18, he could only read, according to his words, not mine, on a fourth grade level. When he basically saw a video for the Navy SEALs, he said he was close to uh, 400 pounds. He lost over 150 pounds or whatever so that he could basically qualify, so he could basically join the Navy or whatever and uh, join something called the Basic Underwater Demolition uh, Training or known, as, known affectionately as BUDS. It's literally ranked the hardest uh, training, um, ranked the hardest training um, course in the world for special spec ops people, period. Not just in the United States, worldwide. David Goggins basically failed BUDS two times. The second time he failed BUDS, his wife left him. The third time he basically uh, got into BUDS, he basically broke both of his legs and he had to run on broken legs for four days in order so he could basically pass it. But guess what? He passed it and he became a Navy SEAL. No disrespect to uh, Jocko Willick or Leif Babin or some of the other uh, Navy SEAL operators that uh, are retired now and that kind of have acc accumulated some type of fame. David Goggins is arguably the most famous and most popular Navy SEAL in the world. And if you ever want to feel sorry for yourself and you ever want to talk about, oh, woe is me, life is bad, you seriously need to read the book, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. That man went through, I mean, horribly racial stuff, horrible educational stuff. He witnessed all kinds of abuses that children should never have to see, but he basically pushed through it, realized no one was gonna come to save him, and he basically saved himself. Next, Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss, I don't know if you know this, basically was rejected over 27 times. Literally, uh, he had 27 different publishers tell him he was too stupid and his books were too boring, basically, for him to basically ever be an author. The 28th person that he went to said, you know what, you're a weird guy and your, your writing style is very strange, but you know what, we're going to give you a shot. And today, Dr. Seuss is literally still, decades later, the most famous children's author in history. It was this uh, really tall, uh, it was a basketball player or whatever, right? He got he played for the Boston Celtics, he played for the Cleveland Cavaliers, he played for the Phoenix Suns, and he also played for the Los Angeles Lakers. He got cut from his middle school team and almost quit playing basketball. The only reason why he didn't was because his father, who was U.S. military, said, military said, no, you need to basically keep playing basketball. The guy's name was Shaquille O'Neal, and he's a top 10 player in NBA history today. I hope all of you fail at something because in order to be successful, you almost have to fail. But you know what? Mentally strong people, when they fail, they don't quit. They keep moving forward until they succeed. So with that, everybody, it's your boy, Chris. Uh, I know this is one of those kind of things that I wanted to talk to you all about because a lot of times mental strength is one of those things that in our society, I think is kind of being uh, whitewashed because everyone, unfortunately, particularly in the IG space, the social media, they're telling everybody to take the easy way out, uh, take a, get a job that's not going to require you to work as hard. Basically, you work smart, don't work hard. No, you need to, you need to do both. Um, and on my channel, Finance is Patient, I try to push different things uh, to push you to basically become financially literate and to build generational wealth, starting from the time you get your social security number as a baby to the time that you die. And this channel is all about making money. It's all about saving money. It's all about building generational wealth. And it's all about financially emancipating yourself from um, generational poverty. Please like, please comment, please share, and please subscribe. And remember, people, it's very hard to build generational wealth if you're a mentally weak person. Thanks, everybody. Take it easy. It's your boy, Chris. I'm out. Peace.